Can't say no. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, guys. I'm here with Connor Manning, quarterback of the Kalanda Broncos. And I am just going to, yeah, I got my fun little mic here. Finally have a chance to use it. But I am going to let Connor introduce himself, and then we're going to do a little uh, interview. Yeah, what's up, bro? Thanks for having me. Of course, uh, man. Uh, where do I start? You know, played college ball at the University of Utah three years, then Georgia State for two. Uh, been over with Kalana for now. This will be our second year, so I'm excited. Kind of a third year, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Damn. Sad. COVID. <laughs> All right, so me and Connor became friends um, after my senior year signed a contract. I got to Europe, and he was already there for how long were you there? Probably at least three or four months already. Three, yeah, I think it was yeah three four months before I got there. So I got there. He knew what was going on. I had no idea. The one, the first thing that pops in my head was me crossing the uh, the streets. And I was so scared to just walk. And Connor, can oh, you yeah, start? Can you, yeah, can you start off by just explaining how that works in in Switzerland? How you just walk across the street? Yeah, I think it's it's really Europe in general. I guess you just you literally just walk. There's a car coming, but they have to stop for you. Whereas you know in America they'll just run you over. Yeah. But they don't. I mean, so they can be going sixty miles per hour, but you just got to walk and you just got to hit it. And, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I remember my, my first time, dude. I was like, I saw this car coming, and he was slowing down, but he was honking on the horn, getting pissed because I'm like waiting for him, and because I didn't know to just hit it. But yeah, man, it's, it's a trip. Just gotta go, huh? Um, all right. So what I did because I'm not super creative, I just I texted a few of my friends. So I'm gonna give their names real quick: Ryan Till, Drew Korf, Luke Overton, Devin Pope my mom and that's it so i'm just gonna ask some random questions um so shout out them they text me back right away for questions so all right ryan till wants to know what is a daily routine like for a player playing football in europe daily routine i guess well for us we practice at night so everything we do uh, morning wake up have breakfast usually go to the gym um, whatever we're doing, rehab or just working out. Um, lunch at our great sponsored restaurant, uh, Ticino's. Ticino's. Yep. Um, Love those guys. Shout out. Yeah. And then um, usually, you know, we kind of either go to a coffee shop or just kind of hang out, walk around. Uh, dinner, then we go to practice. Practice is usually about, what, 8 o'clock, I think? So, yeah, it's about an hour and a half, two hours of work. And then... Uh, that's your day. <laughs> Wake up and do it all over again. Over and over again. <laughs> but it's it's a good it's the good life. Oh yeah, no doubt. Do you do much traveling other than for games? Oh uh, yeah. I mean I think I, think I counted, counted I went to nine, nine different, different countries, countries last time. Um, wow. So, so yeah, I mean it's pretty cool how our team is set up with how, you know, you obviously know that we only practice, what, twice, three times a week if we're playing an international league uh, team. So we have a lot of time. Uh, essentially, that's free. So we've been on, I mean, there was a couple of games where we got on a bus right after a game, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> or, you know, we that's wake the next day. That's the worst trip of our life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's for another time. Um <laughs> Or, you know, we hop on a train to Zurich, hop on a plane, and we're in London in, you know, two hours. So we've, I've done a lot of things like that to where it's, you don't, especially towards the end of the year, I felt like we didn't get to travel as much because obviously we're locking in, playoffs, things like that. But yeah, uh, definitely early on, you know, take advantage of traveling. Yeah, and it's cheap traveling there, too. Just a little pointer. Once you get the ticket to Europe, it's cheap to travel there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, a few people had this question. What is the biggest difference you noticed in society while being in Europe versus the United States? It's kind of a tough one. Society, huh? Um, good question. I think it's 
it changes different countries you go to. I, Switzerland this is a very small country, not very populated, and especially in the town we live in. For sure. Um, I think things move a little slower. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's cool how everyone's always outside and everyone's at the coffee shop or, you know, having a drink or something like that. I think that's very cool to me to where everyone's just in America. It's just, it seems like you're always going 110 miles per hour to your next thing or, you know, there's always chaos. It's, I don't know. I think that's I feel like in drivers. Europe, <laughs> I feel like in Europe things are just a little slower and uh, not as chaotic, I would say. Yeah, I like that. All right. Now from Drew, what stands out about being an American in Switzerland? Oh, man, everything. <laughs> because everyone knows you're American. <laughs> I think that's uh, a tough thing. They, Whether they know it or not, I don't know how they know it, but when you're walking around, you can just tell everyone knows that you are not uh, a member of the Swiss nation, I would say. So it's uh, it's different. Um, I mean, everyone you meet, they speak English, uh, whether they want to or not. So it's you can still communicate with a lot of people. Um, but at first, you know, people are very standoffish, I think, towards us. But once, uh, obviously, they get to know us and we get to know them, you know, they're great people. Yeah, for sure. What's your favorite place you've been to in Europe? Favorite place? Ah, um, I was I would say I could live in London. Like I would I would see myself living in London for about a year. So that's, I think that's kind of put in a different category because I loved it so much in that sense. Um, I would have to either say Prague. Or uh, Split Croatia was my favorite spot. Man, I haven't been to any of those places yet. I'm so jealous. Mm -hmm. um, London, if if we can, with COVID and everything, we have to go to London. That's yeah. like my number one place I want to go. The UK for sure. Yes. Yeah, that and yes. Um, all right. So here's a question that I have for you as well. Drew asked it, but I love this question. If you could take something from European football and put it into American football, what would it be? Like, if you would implement something from European football into American. Hmm. Um, we're talking just rules-wise or players? players kind of like this, how everything works. Mm, when I read the question, I immediately thought of it as how playing in Europe was the is the most fun I've had in any yeah. football. So I try to think of what was fun and what would I put it into college football, maybe. I think, uh, especially, especially in today's society, society from, from just a younger generation standpoint of kids, the way they've grown up to where they're not really playing for fun anymore. They're kind of forced to play. It seems like they don't fall in love with the game because they're playing it also year round. So like nobody's playing three sports anymore. Nobody's... Uh, Everyone's just focused on one sport because some guru coach told them, you know, they, they have to do this to be successful, which uh, I, I do not believe in. I think they need to be playing every other sport um, just like they did back in the day. Um, so I think from a standpoint kind of that, American football has become such a business and such a job to where a lot of the, I don't know, the, the true reasons why you love the game so much um, have kind of gone off the window. And when you play in Europe, they're out there because they want to play. You know, it's it's a club sport for them, essentially. So they want to be out there having fun, playing this, obviously, the best game in history, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but I think that I think that brings a lot of just, obviously, it's more business for us. And if, you know, we don't contribute or we don't do what we have to do on the field, uh, circumstances, you can get cut. And obviously, just like NFL or anything like that. Mm. But... I think everyone's just out there because they want to be out there and it makes, you know, creates that fun environment, I would say. Yeah, it kind of puts things into perspective, at least when I'm there, because the, they are there because they love the sport and they're having fun yeah. and they look forward to practice. They look forward to the games. A lot of people in America, they don't look forward to the training, the practice, yeah, anything right. they want. They look forward to being seen on 
social media and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, a lot of guys, they just want to play, and I think that's cool. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's see. Jump down to Luke here real quick. Um, uh, so that's similar. Is there anything you like in European football better than you like in American football? And it might be that same answer. But that's what Luke was wondering. Um, yeah, but I think one thing I fell in love with is the uh, it's kind of funny the free beers after games. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it was the best. I, I remember after my first game. Obviously, I had no clue this was happening. And uh, I know you remember Boogan. He comes oh, yeah. up to me. He's like, "Hey, bro, you want a beer?" Like after the game. I'm like, hell yeah, I want a beer. He's like, all right. <laughs> they just give players the beers over there. So I'm like, what? So I think that's easily my favorite part. And we're chugging it too. <laughs> right. All right. Well, okay, here's a really good one. What's one American food you crave when you're in Europe? Um, that's tough. There's so many. I think... Because we, I mean, we eat a lot of pasta and things of that nature. Obviously, a good hamburger. Mm. You know, I'm thinking in and out stuff like that. Um, but mainly, I would say Mexican food. Yes. Obviously, living living in Southern California, it's got. I mean, I'm biased, but I would say the best Mexican food around. So we don't get too much of that over there. You know, Arizona uh, I would people that. would disagree with you. I think uh, there was another random thing. They don't. I just thought about it the other day. They don't have bagels. <laughs> hmm. Like everything's like a croissant or something like that. You know, toast. Yeah, and it was hard to find and peanut butter. Was, yeah, <laughs> and that's like my favorite snack is a bagel and peanut butter. Damn. So I, I think I've literally eaten a, a bagel every single day since I've been home, <laughs> like without even recognizing it. You won't be able to soon. I know, man. That's why I mean them all. <laughs> all right, Devin Pope. He is also from California, Moore Park. And Shout out. he is wondering, how does the level of competition compare to what you've played in before or to American football? Yeah, I think it's a really tough, I don't know, it's a really tough answer for the sense of, there's a lot of guys over there who can play and, and have, I mean, we've had five or six guys go out and play juco ball from our team who are from Switzerland, come out into California and play. Um, our center, he played in Canada. Um, my left tackle played in NFL Europe, you know what I mean? So guys, and then we had a bunch of guys internationally. Yeah, my daddy Mathis, like two times our age. Um, Literally, it's not within guys playing the DFL, you know, there's so there's guys who can really play. We played guys uh, like we played against Swarco, um, Austrian team, and their corner was a three-year starter at Clemson. You know what I mean? So there's guys who can definitely play. I think the biggest it's such a hard answer because uh, for me, the depth of European football. There's a lot of guys who are obviously just learning the game. And want to learn the game, but obviously their skill skill wise may not be there yet. So I think of the ones and even a little bit of the twos, you know, can really play and guys who who have played um, at higher levels, and then things can kind of fall off. I would say a little bit farther than American football usually. Yeah, I will also add that the Sparko Raiders they sent like two guys to the NFL. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, one guys on the running, running, running backs back. on their practice. Running back went yeah, to the Giants for like yeah. practice squad. Yeah, so I mean, if you buy in there and really fall in love with the game, football is becoming way more popular over there, especially NFL. Oh yeah. So it has become, and it's still becoming. I would say even crazy more popular. Definitely. I mean, our, look at our team. We're gonna have we we'll probably have over sixty guys this year. Yeah, it's from a small and, town. I mean, yeah, exactly. All right, my mom. Let's see. Let's see. Mama Gray. Okay. First, one more from Dev Devin Pope. How does an American athlete find an opportunity to play in Europe? Yeah, I think there's a lot of different resources. You can, uh, there's a thing called Euro Players. Mm -hmm. 
uh, online that you can create a profile. It's, it's kind of the same thing out here for recruiting wise. You create a profile, you put huddle on, you know, stats, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if you're definitely interested, I would uh, look into creating a profile there. Um, but it'll also, I mean, word of mouth. My coach, uh, so like me and you, we kind of got recruited differently. I got recruited because my coach, our coach, was my high school coach. You know, so since I was 17 years old, I knew once my career in America was over, whether I was college or the next level, um, that I was going to go over there and play for him. So like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't really have to do anything. You know, it was. We've been in communication forever, so it was easy that way. Um, but like I would say, for your standpoint, you know, you just your tape was out there, right? We found you on Huddle, blah blah blah. Got your tape, um, and next thing you know, you're on a plane. So yeah. I think there's different ways to go about it. Even I've had a couple guys that I've put through to like other coaches or other guys who knew coaches, you know. So it's really it's a big connection, I would say. But the easiest bet was. Go on uh, Euro players, create a profile. Definitely, yeah. It's a, uh, it's not so easy to get on a team either. Like if you think about it, there's not a huge amount of teams over there, and the teams that do have Americans, they might only have two to three Americans on each team. So it's not something where you just you're good enough, you get on a team. So I try to explain that to people. So you really got to be proactive in reaching out to people and getting on the website mm -hmm. and staying in shape. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, now. From the mom. She was really excited to ask you questions. So, happy, happy she touched me. Let's go. Uh, uh, uh. All right. So, would you consider moving to Switzerland or Europe full time? You kind of answered that earlier, but would you ever move to Switzerland? I don't think, well, <laughs> legally, we probably couldn't. I don't think so. Of there's so many boundaries and there's so many roles to it. Um, I I love Switzerland. I love everything about it. The mountains are the most beautiful thing you'll ever see in your life. Um, I don't think I personally could. Like a, like Buffy, you know, he's a lifer now. He's, he's stuck over there. He's got the family, got the kid, got the wife, you know. So he's, he's a lifer. But um, like I said, I think if I was to live in Europe, uh, I would definitely want to live in London. Probably because of the language, and that leads me to the next question. My mom said, the language, how is that when working and traveling? So does is there a language issue playing football, and how is being an English speaker traveling Europe? Um, so it's the good thing about, you know, our team especially, there's everybody speaks English, whether it's really good or, you know, can – just barely get by. Uh, we can communicate to where even even if I use, for example, uh, one of our receivers, little Melvin, Karate Kid. Right? He's an awesome dude. Um, doesn't speak great English, so we kind of I communicate through like Sundi, another receiver, to him or vice versa or Buffum uh, translates and stuff like that. Uh, he understands it, but kind of saying back it's it's hard for him to uh to express himself sometimes uh traveling usually when you're in a major airport i would say it's it is difficult but they usually have english signs around or you can easily get by because all the workers are, they have to speak english it, it seems like um so yeah like when i went to london obviously it was pretty easy when i flew into athens um i had to ask a couple people but it was, you know, it got me pointing in the right direction, what train I got to hop on, things like that. So uh, it's really, it's really not too bad. It's, I think it's kind of fun because sometimes, uh, just say oh, you're on the football pe field, uh, people like to talk smack, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's kind of cool to <clears throat> hear what they say. And, you know, you can say a lot of things in English that they might not even understand. So it's, That's true. you know, it's, it's always kind of back and forth, but um, I mean, first, especially in, in this small town we live in, I think first, at first, you know, once you got there, it was pretty difficult. Yeah. Um, but obviously being with two other Americans and Buffy around and, you know, it, it makes things a lot easier. But um, like, 
I remember we went to a coffee shop right off the plane my first time and we're ordering and I had no clue what to say. I had no clue, you know, things like things like that. Yeah. Whereas when we went back this past year, it was I know all the little sayings. What do I what I have to order, you know, things like that. So it's it's gotten better and I don't think it's too bad. Uh, some places are a little worse than others, but for the most part, everyone speaks English. Yeah, just got to get comfortable with it, too. Just got to yeah, talk, exactly. be yourself. And it's, I just thought of this, it's, uh, I remember one thing that made us mad last year was we would go up to people speaking English, and they would say, oh, I don't speak good English, and then they would speak better English than we do. <laughs> They're like, I've never spoke English to an English-speaking person, and then they were perfect. They, they can speak it, but they don't want to. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, my mom my mom is very upset. She really wanted to come um, see us play and go to Europe. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe magically everything will be better in the next few months and she can fly out there. But she definitely wants to see us play. All right, so for the next, the next questions I have, I know we've been on here for a little bit. I apologize. But um, quick answers only, okay? Or at least let's try. So, all right, here we go. How's training going? Great. Great. Why are people from California the worst? Uh, I cannot say that on this show. Okay. Why would Rocky Mountain College beat Georgia State and Utah? Uh, that wouldn't happen. Okay. Who is your favorite Marvel character and why? <laughs> Marvel character? Oh, man. Thor, probably. Thor? Because he's... Yeah, he's a freaking stud. All right. <sighs> Trivia time. Are you ready for this? No, oh, wow. All right. You have to answer these. They are Marvel trivia only. So, I will read the question. Uh, also, do you recognize this helmet? Uh, a little MVP status? Yeah. First game, baby. All right, so I'll read the question. I'll read four possible answers. You have to pick the correct one. Are you ready? Yes. In Iron Man, what song plays at the beginning of the movie? Iron Man by Black Sabbath? Back in Black by ACDC? Ordinary World by Dur Duran Duran? Stairway to Heaven by... By Led Zeppelin. Uh, back in Black. Boom! Correct! Thor. In the movie <laughs> Thor, what does Thor want another of when he's in the diner? A slice of pie? A piece of toast? A stack of pancakes? Or a cup of coffee? A cup of coffee. Boom! You got it. In Guardians of the Galaxy... What were the three items Rocket claims he needs in order to escape the prison? A security card, a fork, and an ankle monitor? That's one. A security okay. band, a battery, and a prosthetic leg? A pair of binoculars, a detonator, and a prosthetic leg? A knife, cable, cable wires, and Peter's mixtape? Uh, the answer would be B. You are correct. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, he's three for three. The last question okay. for Marvel. Captain America, Civil War. Who okay. isn't on Iron Man's team? Mm. Vision, Black Panther, Hawkeye, or Black Widow? Uh, that would be Hawkeye. <gasps> you got it! You got them all! You got them all right! Connor Manning, the Marvel genius. I don't, know. I don't know if that makes me look good or not. That was impressive. That was uh, impressive. That was I am also having a seizure right now because of that light. Um, all right. Is it true Max speaks better German than you? No. False. <laughs> Is it true people consider you the Mike Vick, Lamar Jackson of Switzerland? Uh, that is extremely true. Is it true, before the first game, you're dyeing your hair blonde to look like Max? Uh, that would be a negative. Wrong. <laughs> uh, 
best food you've had in Europe? Damn. Put me on. It's probably that uh, schnitzel in Munich. Good choice. Worst part about Europe besides walking up the stairs at our old place? Oh, God. <laughs> um, worst part is. Uh, I don't know what saying. Um, I would probably say not having Mexican food around. Not having Mexican food. Good answer. Okay. Here we go. Just a few more here. Okay, a little bit more serious side. What age did you start football? Uh, my first year of tackle was in eighth grade. What were your goals as a young kid? Did you fall in love and just want to be NFL right away, or what were your goals? Um, I didn't know because I was, I was a pretty good baseball player as well. Um, mm. I didn't know if I wanted to play baseball or not, and then short answer, I became a starter on varsity as a sophomore and kind of just fell in love. So I think my, but my realistic goal, I want to play college football. Hell yeah. Uh, 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 where was I? Who's your favorite player of all time slash inspiration? Football? Yes. Um, I fell in love with John Elway as a kid, I would say. Nice. Um, but my favorite, if I would just say right now, by far Aaron Rodgers. That's so disappointing. Um, <laughs> why are the Seahawks the best team in the NFL? Uh, they're not. Wrong. But shout out to my boy, Penny Hart. That's right. That's right. Uh, sure. Favorite music artist? Oh, man. That's, that's a tough one. Um, possibly Revolution. Okay. Possibly. There's too many genres. Uh, what is the biggest moment or biggest game you've ever played in? Um, probably, I mean, I've played in some pretty big games, but they didn't really mean much besides a regular college football game. Um, I'd say my state title junior year. Wow. Did you win? No, we lost. Sore subject. So my next question was the worst moment. So is that the best and the worst moment? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take that as the worst. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I played against, you know, playing in Penn State when they were the all, let's just say, it was their first night game. So it was a whiteout. The whiteout. So I would say that, that was pretty legit. And it was it was close at first, right? Or the whole game was close? Or? Uh, not against Penn State. No. Junior year, we played Wisconsin. Oh, okay, that's what I'm thinking of. And we were... We are beating them in the fourth, and then we lost by, uh, I think, a field goal or something like that. That's sort of similar to my next question. Um, you can skip it if you want. What are your thoughts on the refs of the Sparko Raiders game? <laughs> um, extremely disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I will, I will never get over that. The, I, that's my biggest heartbreak in football. and yeah. But that's for another time, though. Yeah. Uh, now my last my last questions. Do you have any specific goals for this year? Specific goals? No, I've always just had team goals, and that would be to win. Um, um, and honestly, to not lose a game this year. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Let me grab this real quick. I would not mind getting another one of those, huh? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That we need to get another one of those. Hopefully two if we could do the CEFL. We'll see, though. Yeah. But definitely win. That's what we got to do. That's all that matters. Um, How many touchdown passes to Max Gray this year? (laughs) Depends how many CFL games we play in. Good point. How many touchdown passes will Max Gray throw this year? (laughs) Uh, That's a zero for sure. (laughs) Uh, Who's the funniest player on the team that just pops in your head right now? Uh, I would say Melvin or uh, Frenchie. Perfect. One place you and I need to travel to. Um, uh, Netherlands or Dublin? Oh, good choice. 
What are your thoughts on the women in Europe? There's beautiful women everywhere. <laughs> Good answer. Are you ready for another year with your older brother, Max Gray? Um, legally, that is incorrect, but I am excited. I'm excited too, but I am her older brother. Um, and are you taking it one season at a time? Do you know how many more seasons you will play, or is this your last season? Um, you do not have to answer. Well, as long as COVID uh, operates to where we can play, this is going to be my last year. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Connor Manning. He's an incredible wow. quarterback. Great friend, great leader, as you could tell, and we are extremely excited to get back to Switzerland. It's going to be weird with COVID and all that, but we're hoping we could just play. And if we can't travel outside of Europe or outside of Switzerland, there's a whole. I'm I'm okay with getting locked down in Switzerland. I'm okay with being stuck in Switzerland. Yeah, that doesn't sound. Bad. There's worse things in life than being locked down in the Alps. That's what I was saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. All right, any last shout-outs you want to give or um, anything you want to say? Shout-out shout out to the squad. Uh, see you guys in a couple weeks for me. So I'm just excited and ready to get over there and play some football again. Yeah, well, safe travels, man. And I wish you the best of luck. And I'm going to – I have to figure out how to uh, exit out of here. But I'm going to stop recording, but we could still <laughs> – hold on.